Okay, today I've got something a little fun, guys. Or you could say a little <laughs> fun guy. <laughs> In the summer, I like to make groups of things for some reason. Last year it was macarons and also we did pies and this year it is going to be mushrooms. There is a ton of them growing in my garden right now. I'm just going to ignore this one that looks a little bit erotic. So I'm relatively familiar with making amanita mushrooms. I've made them with moon tops, heart tops, waffle tops, but the one thing that I haven't tried to do is to make them as realistic looking as humanly possible because that is a real challenge for me. Over on Instagram, I asked you guys what your favorite weird or cool mushrooms were. So let's take a look at what you guys had to say. Anna W has recommended that we do the Barbie Pagoda fungus heart. I'm gonna look this up and see what this is. <gasps> oh my gosh. If I was a mushroom, this would be me. Ah! We are definitely gonna have to add the Barbie Pagoda to the list. Barbie Pagoda, Barbie Barbie Pagoda. Andy Corn 11 recommended that we do the bleeding tooth fungus. If you guys haven't seen the bleeding tooth fungus before, it is so cool. It looks like it's bleeding. Like it just looks like a mushroom that's got a bunch of little droplets of blood coming out of it. This is one that I was really hoping that one of you would say to me, so I'm really glad that you did. 10 out of 10, the bleeding tooth fungus is going on the list. I am seeing a lot of people here that are wanting me to do the ink cap, so I think we're gonna add that one to the list. I think the other mushrooms that we are going to do, there's only one or two people that have asked me to do the moral mushroom, and it would be immoral for me not to try. I'm just letting you know that the puns are only gonna get worse and I'm not ashamed of myself, so let's do it then. I'm not seeing on the list here the chanterelle mushroom, but that's the one that actually made me wanna try and do this. We officially have our list of mush halves, so let's get started. <laughs> Mush abs. <laughs> Come on, it's so good. And there's so much room for creativity with these jokes. We are starting off with the chanterelle mushroom, which in my opinion was the easiest out of all of the mushrooms in this video. I didn't actually realize this while I was making things, but now that I'm editing everything, I realized that I did them in ascending order, so it just got harder and harder for me as I went through the video. I've also decided that I'm going to be painting these with powder, so I'm gonna use some powder pigment. A lot of people prefer to do it after they are baked with acrylic paint. I like to be a little bit of a risky biscuit. So now that we have finished the chanterelle mushrooms, I'm gonna need a minute. Get it? Cause we're gonna do the amanitas. <laughs> so the way that I've made the amanita mushrooms before, I have pressed them flat. For these ones, I think I'd like to try making it a little bit domed because that's actually what it looks like on the fly agaric. So I have these ones here that I have never tried before. And this one here, I thought either one of them would make a pretty good place for me to press a ball so that I can pull it out and it'll have a nice finished dome on it. Well, uh, that's not what you want. Put your nipples back in. Bingo! We got it. A nice little dome. So for the Amanita mushrooms, I thought we would do something a little bit different by dry brushing them and then adding acrylic paint after the fact so that I could get a really seamless gradient. Once that was dry, I added some really thick acrylic paint so that it would have a nice texture like the mushrooms actually do in real life. And then came the daunting task of adding a frilly little skirt to our mushroom stem. Just a pretty little frilly little skirt on our mushroom. And that can be kind of tricky to achieve, so wish me luck! Why do mushrooms have to be this specific shape? Please don't get demonetized. Uh, I'll let you be the judge. And we have skirt. Now I just have to remember how I did that and do it five more times. While I was working on this, I not only got the side eye from my cats, but also my husband. I'm innocent, I swear. Okay, all better. There's like a little arch in its back and I'm so tempted to give it a butt. You know what, YOLO. Mushroom butt crack. Oh yeah. Frills make it look like it's got a cute little 90s bowl cut. He's just sort of like, So having finished a couple of mushrooms, I have actually managed to sneak a little bit of a surprise in there that I'm gonna show you guys at the end of the video. It's pretty cool. I think it's about time that we got to the moral of the story. Now the morals were particularly fun to sculpt because they have all these little crevices everywhere. So it was very detail oriented and I enjoyed picking away and building holes. 
These things are super holy. That's maybe why they're so moral. <laughs> Bad jokes aside, it was really fun putting all of the craters into these and I baked them and then put a layer of dry brush paint over top so that all of the deep dark holes could sing while the upper level could show that it was light. These mushrooms were the picture perfect version of their names because they gave me hardly any trouble. And honestly, it was pretty much a pleasant little breeze to make them. So next up is the Barbie Pagoda fungus. And to say that I am excited is kind of the understatement of this century. I had no idea that this existed. I love mushrooms. I love Barbie. I was crying during the movie. It's amazing. <laughs> and you guys are probably going to see me using this fungus now in a bunch of my drawings. It's very delicate looking and very spindly, but I'm going to do my very best. It literally looks like a fairy's bloomers. I can't believe that I didn't discover it sooner, but that's what life is all about. Discovering new things and finding new obsessions. need you guys to know that I'm being verbally harassed by one of my cats right now. Oh my god. Balancing this is really difficult. <laughs> Even though it's a little bit more unstable, I definitely prefer this one to this one. So I'm going to use the clay from this one and start over. I'll see you guys in like two seconds when all of these are finished. Okay, so I'm all finished sculpting these. They look like little fountains, which is something that I really like. I think they're super cute. I'm just gonna go ahead and get my pigment palette and I'm going to dry brush some pigment on these. There were a couple pictures that I found. I think it might have been like rendered or a digital drawing. I did have a little bit of blue mixed in with this baby pink that I'm seeing in a majority of the photos. And I like that sort of cotton candy feeling. I tried it with the blue and I don't think that it looks that good so I'm only going to make this one with the blue and the rest of them are just going to stay pink. I think it just makes it look like it's bruised and that's not what we're going for. I like that the rest of them look like seashells so I'm going to leave them as is and you guys can see the finished product at the very end of the video. Either I'm a genius or I'm about to ruin one of my favorite pans. We will see- oh, oh that's disgusting. That's not working. <laughs> Okay, I'm thinking this will be enough. I'm gonna pop this in the oven, let it bake, and then I'm gonna come back and try and get this off of my pan. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, it worked. Now just to figure out how the heck I'm gonna stick them to a mushroom cap. I'll try sculpting one right now and see what I can do. Here goes nothing. Oh, I think it's gonna work. Guys, I think it's gonna work. It's alive! So the only issue is when I set it down, so I'm gonna have to stick them on and then make it go like that. For baking but that's okay I'm going to bake the tops separate from the bottoms again just to make sure that I've got all these cool little drippy bits on here so I'm gonna go ahead and sculpt those right now okay so the caps are pretty much all finished I couldn't be more pleased with these little spooky flaps <laughs> Spooky flaps, that's gonna be the title of my autobiography. Hey, I'm just gonna do a little bit of that dry brushing pigment technique. Then we're gonna put some acrylic paint on them after the fact, and then these caps should be done, and I'm gonna sculpt the bases. I'm so excited, it's so cool. <laughs> really wasn't sure how I was going to do this when you guys suggested it, but I think we actually might have pulled it off. I even added a couple of smudging details to the stem just so that it looked as natural as possible. I saved the best for last. I think the blood tooth fungus is the one that I'm the most excited for because it's going to be gooey and full of all these little juicy speckles. My game plan is to sculpt the blood tooth mushroom with some divots in it. So hopefully that it can hold all of those little UV resin droplets that we're gonna do. And I'll have like a little UV light flashlight and fingers crossed things won't get too messy or run all over the place. I'm really excited for this one, but I'm also really nervous because it's the only one that involves resin and sometimes resin and I don't necessarily get along the greatest. And once we're all finished this, it's time for the final reveal of all of our mushrooms. I think because I was a little bit nervous about this one, I ended up making a shape to start off with that I wasn't very fond of and I had to start over. I hate this shape. 
Don't. I don't like the shape. I'm starting over now. I took a little break and that helped me see the shapes for what they were so that I could make something that ultimately ended up being really fond of. The thing I think I'm enjoying the most about these is how chubby they are. He's just a little chonk baby. Once the groundwork was established, it was time for some eyes and to put those holes in there that are ultimately going to hold the UV resin once they're baked. I cannot tell you how excited I am to bake these and then fill them with the resin because they look so cute. Oh, they're so fat and angry, just like me. So it was my first time mixing UV resin with this sort of a pigment, and I know you guys love it when I ride the treble train, but I would like to say, not to spoil anything, that it did actually turn out even better than I had anticipated. So if you're thinking of coloring your resin this way, I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. Oh no! Now the thing I like the most about the UV resin, even though I was just screaming oh no, is that if it's not fully cured, it is actually pretty easy to pick the pieces off and then clean it up so that you can try again if you catch it soon enough. I think the most ambitious spot was when I put them on the sides of the mushrooms. That's where I struggled the most. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Lucky for us, it had not set yet, so I can still clean it off. I am very nervous right now. Also, if my voice sounds funny, I'm wearing breathing protection. And if you're ever doing something like this, you should be too. Thank goodness for gloves, because otherwise my fingers would be tanned. And that's it, the final mushroom was completed and now it's time for the moody glamour shots. So much fun working on this project with all of you today and I'd love to know what your favorite mushroom is in the comments below. I'm hoping to give a handful away to a couple of subscribers as well as some of my patrons. It's also time for me to share that very special surprise and look I made everything glow in the dark before your very eyes. Did any of you guess that this is what I was doing? Probably because I'm not that sneaky but I'd like to think that I shocked all of you. Wow. Thank you so much for joining me today, friends, on this really fulfilling adventure. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing and also checking out my online shop. With your support there, we're able to make more fun content like this. Thank you for being with me here today. Okay, I love you. Bye!